Hi, today on Catherine Learn Stuff, we're going to make sip and paint rigid canvases using sublimation. So let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do when we're going to be doing a sip and paint sublimation is we need to come up with some pictures that we're going to use. I just pulled a bunch off the internet um, that I found for free. I've left links to the websites where I got these images so that you can get a copy of them as well if you'd like. These are all for personal use though um, and just some coloring pages that can be used as well. So what I'm going to do is the first thing that I need to do is just cut off any excess um, bits of paper from around my mandalas and my, my images just so that there's nothing extra on there that I don't want to be put onto my canvas. Um, I've also got two different sizes of canvas. I've got a 14 by 11 and an 8 by 8 just because of the size of the pictures that I've printed off um, and also that gives people an easier paint job if it's just smaller pictures instead of bigger ones. So I'm going to cut off any surplus material that I have on my pages here. I don't want to have too much surplus paper around the edges that I don't need or any little bits of um, signatures on the bottom of the pages from the free pages that I got um, so that they're not um, coming onto my canvases or onto any of my other working surfaces when I'm sublimating all of this. So I'm just going to cut everything out um, and then we're going to continue with some more preparing. For each image that I'm going to do, I'm going to need a separate piece of butcher paper. This paper is going to actually absorb the moisture that's coming out of the sublimation ink on the paper. So I need to make sure I've got a separate piece for each sublimation that I'm doing. So I've got about eight pages here that I'm doing, so I need to make sure I've got eight separate um, butcher paper pieces. Here. Now that I've got all my butcher paper cut, I need to do one more piece of prep work. Each of these images is going to be placed onto a canvas. So I need to use my heat sensitive tape and I'm going to place my images upside down onto the canvas and tape them down with this tape. Um, you'll notice for example with this one here I've got too much uh, paper around it so I'm going to trim the paper so that it fits better onto my canvas with no issues and I'm going to tape on each piece onto each canvas in the spots that I want so that my image transfers into the correct spot on my canvas. So now I'm just going to flip each page over and tape them onto my canvas. I don't need to use too much tape, but it's good to use a, a piece on sort of every side or every corner, um, but it doesn't need to be too crazy. With the larger images, I want to try to center them a little bit better than on the smaller ones because they will be a little bit more visible where the ed edges are, but we kind of want to make sure that it's centered and I don't have any additional lines or anything on these larger pieces, so I don't need to do any trimming here. So again, just putting the tape down on them to hold them in place while I'm going to be pressing them later. Also, while I'm doing all this prep work, it's a good time to heat up your heat press um, because it will take a few moments to get to temperature. So you might notice on some of your canvases, like I have right here, that the canvas is actually a little bit dirty. That's not something that you need to be too concerned about because we are going to be painting over the whole canvas during the sip and paint activity. So that's all going to be hidden. But if you don't like the fact that it's dirty like that, you can just use some rubbing alcohol and wipe, wipe it away. Now that all of my canvases are ready, I'm going to move over to my heat press and start pressing these. So I've got my heat press set to 365. You want to have the heat press set in anywhere between 365 to 385 Fahrenheit, but this does require a little bit of practice to get the right temperature. You'll notice that you don't have the right temperature if the sublimation isn't transferring all the way, uh, but if it's too hot your canvas might start to melt and burn, so it just takes a little bit of trial and error. For my heat press I find 365 is typically a good temperature, um, but again I've had to work out to get that value. 
So what I like to do before I do anything is I always have a piece of Teflon paper underneath just so that if my canvases do leak out any glue, um, my actual foam mats underneath are protected and we're ready to start pressing. So I'm just gonna place down my canvas onto my heat press with the paper facing up. And then I'm gonna cover it up with my butcher paper and I'm gonna press it for 15 seconds. You don't need a lot of pressure for, for sublimation, you just need a lot the temperature to be high. So I'm not gonna push down all the way on my heat press when I'm doing this. Now these canvases are very hot once they come out, so just be careful, you can wear heat protecting gloves if you need them or if you have some, um, but you can also just wing it. So I like to check my designs before I pull them off and this one needs a few more seconds of temperature to get the sublimation ink all the way onto the canvas the way that I want it, so I'm going to give it another press. Now that's turned out better. So that's what my design looks like now that it's been pressed. This butcher paper, it can't be reused right away because it's got the moisture from the sublimation ink in it still. So I just use new pieces of paper for each press when I'm doing it. Um, I mean, you can save these and dry them out and reuse them again later. Um, or you can just throw them in the recycling bin and recycle them over them. So I'm going to keep pressing my other images onto the canvases so that we can have a nice sip and paint party later. So you'll see with this picture here, some of the um, paper has actually left marks on this. That's nothing to be concerned about because on the sip and paints, we're actually gonna be painting over the whole canvas, so that'll all get covered up by paint. But you can always just uh, use some rubbing alcohol and rub off any imperfections that you don't like on there. So all of my canvases are done. They turned out pretty nicely. Um, this one here, you can see it's a little bit faded. The, the ink didn't come all the way through in this spot. The nice thing though is when something like this happens, for these sip and paint pictures, um, it's not a big deal because you're going to be painting around the whole thing anyways. So these outlines are really just there as that, as an outline to give you places to paint. Again, this one didn't turn out the greatest here at the tip, but that's alright. These imperfection spots here, this is from the butcher paper. If you don't want to have that on the bare canvas, you can just use rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip or a paper towel and rub it off. Uh, but you don't actually need to do that because the idea is that you're painting this canvas, so you can paint around the edges of everything as well and cover that up. So you don't need to worry about that, but you can. Um, and the one thing you'll notice, these canvases, since they've been heated, are folding, are bending a little bit. So it's a good idea to keep them under um, a hard surface for a while while they are drying so that while they are cooling down so that they will actually cool down straight and then you can have a nice flat canvas. So let's go find our friends and do some painting. And there you have it. All of our sip and paint canvases are done. I've left a description of the products I've used in the details below. If you like this craft, don't forget to check out my website and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.